have thought uh, it's already cast in stone, you know, your retirement age, and if you now claiming to say, well, it's not entirely true that uh, there are no vacancies in terms of where on what level you should be going to as a lecturer in that school. So what, what then should you now say is the cause of all of this? Because they still maintain that, uh, well, there are no vacancies and they also maintain that the retirement age should also be tweaked. The change in the age with regards to retirement will be a function, will be, it's a legislative function. It has nothing to do with the management of the university. Um, but that's something that I know. That even, if, and it, of course it affects only those uh, in the professorial cadre. If you were to retire today at 65, and you're that brilliant, you're that good, you've been able to replicate and you've been able to replicate yourself and make some like contributions to the university. It shouldn't be too difficult for you to have a contract appointment. And I've picked up the vibrations from government circles that there's nothing wrong in bringing such people back, even with a higher pay. So, the, it, it, that, but, and what, what are we dealing with? A very small percentage. Is that the reason why you want to shut down the university? Is that the reason why you want to give the university a bad name? But, but have you heard, Prof, that um, as we also says that part of the reason why they're also going on strike is because the government agreed, signed an agreement with them, and they've not implemented all of it? I've heard that a couple of times, even though I've never seen that particular document. But be that as it may, the, it's one of the issues that the government is currently looking into. And... Um, I would not want to preempt anything. I would not want to uh, comment with regards to the position of the government. On these fees issues, what would yes, you sir. say the pattern was? I mean, when students began to pay, they've been paying for three years now. How would you say that even the new intakes were able to cope with the new fees? As a matter of fact, the fresh years that we, that we admitted, at the last time I checked it, over 90% of them had paid their money. The freshers. Uh, Over 90%. 90% say. of the freshers. Which set of the freshers? The very first ones who had to pay or. The no, last I'm even talking about the people the that, would, that just, the last set that just came into 100 level. There's something else again I need to point out. We cannot overlook the fact that the pass rate in Cham has been falling. In other words, do you want to just bring in people for the sake of bringing them in? Or you want to look and be careful about the cutoff point? Why am I saying this? I recall in 2011, 2012, the cutoff point was 200 post jam. I mean, jam. So before you could seek the post jam for the post jam exam. 20 12, 2013, we reduced it to 180 because of the failure rate. Not because you wanted more students. No. And people were ensuring No, interest. no, no. It's a, it's a general thing across board. And the last set that came in, also we had to go as low as 180. And you find that also happening in many other universities. Otherwise, if we had stuck to the 200 level, uh, cut off point, you would have had less people come in. So it was not a function of trying to uh, have more people in, in, in the system. Uh, it's the reality. And the recent jump result, again, we are informed that the failure rate has been very really high. Does um, LASU at the moment provide accommodation for all the students? No. 
Our intention is to make the place uh, a residential university. We've received proposals. We've already mapped out the site for our halls. We've received a proposal, we've received several proposals from interested parties. These have been forwarded to uh, the Minister of Works, uh, the PPP office in, 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 in the government department has uh, looked at it and we're supposed to have another meeting to further discuss. The intention is to have about 10 halls of residence in Lasso. Have things like a shopping mall that will accommodate uh, various act activities. Where do you hope but to get apart the money, from that, where do you hope so, to get the funds for? From? No, the private investors. The private last will not exp uh, expend. The only thing will contribute to just be the land. Now, there's something government is doing for us now. We've mapped out the site for um, building medium income houses, the typical Lagos homes currently being built. The state government has approved to provide us with. Uh, 10 such buildings. Each of them will accommodate about, uh, will have about 12 flats. And contract has already been awarded for the first phase comprising three blocks. That is there. And all these things w were happening in the middle of us to strike and everything. Okay, well, we've got a question from uh, Dede here. Uh, we understand that about for the 2004 2005 part time students, he says, why is it that, they refuse, that the school has refused to graduate them? Is that correct? 2004, 2000. Yeah, part-time part students. Time. Okay. Very interesting thing. I can tell you that you have those who claim to be part-time students who are, in fact, not part-time students of Lasso. How come? They claim they're students, but there's no record. It might interest you to know that when I came in, Lasso did not have any database of students in the school of Pata. None at all? None or it was at all. incomplete? None at all. We had to set up a, a unit in our ICT for them to, to be accommodated. And another thing we had to do was to say to all of them, if you're a student of LASU, come and pay your fees, come and register, so that we can account for you. We changed the format of the exams such that you had less interaction between the lecturer and the student. So the idea of any manipulation or whatever was not going to take place. And we got things set up such that the last two exams, within 48 hours, we had results on the website. So what are you doing about convocation? Because uh, we've had a series of mails from students in that school that for almost four or five years, they haven't actually done their convocation. Thank you, sir. When we came in 2011, we had a convocation in July 2012, when 22,000 people graduated out of which over 14,000 were from the external system. Last year, February, we had over 11,000, out of which uh, 7,000 plus were from external system. And we're expecting about the same number of people from the external system. In fact, we would have had it if it wasn't for this uh, crisis. So to say that they are not uh, being graduated, that is not true. The other thing I need to mention is the fact that some people might... That's not true? When was, sorry, when was the last time they had their convocation? No, before this, before this administration... Especially the part-time students. There was no convocation in Lasso for about four or five years before I came in. So since I came in, we've been having convocations annually. And we already have the one for this year planned. And the governor even wants to be in attendance. So before you came in as vice chancellor, for almost five years, the school didn't have a convocation ceremony for those that have graduated. No. 
Um, and that will explain why we had about 22,000 plus in 2012. If you go to, to the records of the external system, you'll find that some people will tell you that, oh, we finished. But by the time you check their profile, you now discover that they have 15, 20 something outstanding courses, carryovers. And these are the same people that I will say to you. That 20 something carryovers? That's correct. And um, we've had to reorganize the whole thing. I receive text messages every now and then. And I say to them, go and check your status. If I go online, last website, there's last West area there. You click on it, there's a drop down. You see students' results. You click, you insert your matriculation. We have almost 29,000 profiles there. Okay, what, what would you recommend for all of those who are protesting now, what would you suggest as the way out? I want to say that our students should just be calm. They make a submission to the government. They appear before the adult committee of the government. And a report is being prepared. And I'm sure that something will be done. I can, it's not for me to preempt the outcome of that. There's no need for them to cause me him. There's no need for them to go on the streets. Because like I said, what, at the end of the day, what's going to matter is uh, the, the brand of the university, the image that you get across. Uh, as for our lecturers, I want to appeal to them again using this forum that once our students come back, they should just come back and continue with their lectures. Um, in the middle of all this, we were able to get exams to take place recently. We got results of the final year students sent to uh, NYC office. And I can tell you at the next, the next batch uh, of NYC people, you're going to have 3,113 of our graduates going in. So there's no need for us to keep destroying ourselves and giving ourselves uh, a bad name. Let us continue with the process of dialogue and move forward. All right, we've been speaking with Professor John Obafanwa, who is the Vice Chancellor of Lagos State University. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. All right, and we're back after this. Join us again.